everybody welcome back to the channel my name is Brittany and today we're going to have another sew along video today's video is going to be on the call 7726 and I'm going to be sewing view D the wide leg version I love this pattern when I first saw it I was like yes I have to have it <laughs> It's so trendy and popular and I just love the style of these pants. You will probably look at them and think, oh, it would be hard to construct them, but I promise you it's not hard at all. They come together really easy and plus you have me to walk you through all the steps. So let's get into the notions that you're going to need to make these wide lead pants. To make these pants, you're going to need one 9 inch zipper. Of course, you're going to need your matching thread and then you're going to need a hook and bar. Not a hook and eye that you will attach maybe in the back of a blouse, but you need a hook and bar that will go um, in the front of the skirt waistbands and pants waistband. For size, I cut the size 20 and I did not make any adjustments to it. However, as I was wearing the pants throughout the day, I kind of noticed they kind of got a little baggy around the hip area. So I think an 18 would have been better and I know it would have been better because I've already made you B and I cut those in an 18 and those fit perfect. All right, so I'm almost done talking, I promise, but I do just want to let you all know that this is not a pants fitting video. I'm not going to be going through the different modifications and adjustments that many of us have to make when we are making pants. But I do want to refer you to the three books that I used when I first started sewing pants, which was just last year, um, that has really helped me with adjustments and kind of knowing my body and the, um, the modifications that I need to make to the pant pattern. So the first one is Perfect Fitting. I got this off of Amazon and it's just a great book to have in your sewing library at home. It's filled with tons of pictures and just adjustments that you need to make if you're having like pulling in certain areas. It shows you that it does it again in this great book, Fit for Real People. This is a Palmer and Pletch book. Again, it's from Amazon. It's a really, really good um, book to have in your sewing stash. This one here was the first book that I purchased um, when I first started sewing and it's just been great. But now if you really want to get for the pants, get this one, Pants for Real People. This is another great one that's for pants it's going to help you with every single thing that has to do with adjusting pants um getting the right fit um tucks crotch if you have problems with that get this book it would be great to have in your library at home so again these three books are from amazon and i have links for them below if you're interested in checking them out so that's it make sure that you transfer all your markings and your notches and we can get started all right everybody so let's get started with step one for step one we are going to make our pleats for the front and our back pants and to do this, working on the inside, so the wrong side is facing you, you're going to bring those lines together and you're just going to pin them in place. And a great way to make sure that you are pinning um, down the straight line is to put a pin in one line and then just double check on the back to make sure it went through right. So just go ahead and continue doing this all the way down the line on all of your pieces, your front and your back. So once you have everything pinned, it should look a little something like this. And so what you're going to do is baste and then stitch. And then you want to press your pleats toward the center and then you're going to baste across the upper edge. So again, you're going to baste it, then stitch it, then press it toward the center and then baste across the upper edge. You go ahead and do this for all pieces. So head to your machine now. All right. So once you have everything sewn and pressed, it should look a little something like this. You should have went ahead and pressed your um, pleats toward the center front and baste it at the top. All right, so now working with step two, we are going to top stitch along our pleat and then we're going to pivot at the lower large circle. So again, start at the top and top stitch along the pleat and pivot at the lower large circle. Go ahead and do this to all of your pieces now. So once you have that done, now we're going to put the backs to the side for a little bit and start working on our fronts. So between two notches, you should have transferred a large circle and we're going to reinforce that. So stitch about an inch above that and an inch below that just to reinforce it. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, so once you have it reinforced, you can't see mine because I use black thread, but I did reinforce mine. You're going to take your scissors and you're just going to snip right to the dot. Don't snip through it, just snip to it. So like I did here, I just snipped to it and I'm going to do that for the other dot the same exact way. I'm just going to snip right to it. So go ahead and reinforce and then snip to your dot now. All right, everybody, so now we're going to take our pocket piece, which is piece number three, and we're going to pin it to the upper side edge of our front. So go ahead and take your piece, and you should have a notch here. It lines up with your pocket notch. So go ahead and pin there first. And after you have it pinned there, you just want to pin all the way down, matching up the dots on your pocket and on your pants. All 
Once you have it pinned in place, go ahead and start at your large dot and sew all the way down to the side of the pocket now. All right, so once you're done, I went ahead and I pressed my pocket, but now you should be able to flip it to the inside like I'm doing here. If yours is not um, folding in that easily, you probably went up too far with your stitching. You can just go back and take some of that stitching out and it should be able to fold in nicely for you. So again, go ahead and press your pockets and then we can move on to the next step. All right, so the next step, we're gonna be working on piece four, which is our side front. And we are going to now reinforce the inner corner so you should have transferred a large dot right there. So you're gonna um, stitch about an inch above and then pivot and stitch over another inch just to reinforce that large circle. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so once you have it reinforced, go ahead and grab your scissors and you're gonna clip it um, with a diagonal down to the large dot. Remember, don't clip through it, just clip to it. I'm sorry I'm off camera right here, but I could not see my line. <laughs> I had to get close to it. <laughs> but once you have uh, both of them clipped like I have here, now we can go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, everybody, so now we are on step six. And for step six, we are going to have right sides facing. So the right side of your pants is gonna face the right side of your side front. And so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pin the side front to the side edge of the front of your pants. So go ahead and lay it again, right sides facing, and you're just gonna start pinning at the top all the way down to the large circle. So match up the notches. And then again, begin pinning all the way down to the dot. So it should look a little something like this. You're gonna stitch all the way to the large circle and do this for both of your side front pieces. Okay, once you have it done, you wanna go ahead and press that seam toward the front. I also went ahead and finished off my seams with my serger. So now you should just be able to fold over that side front onto the pocket. So it should look a little something like this now. Okay, so now we're going to pin our side front to our pocket. So you wanna go ahead and pin at the top and then pin all the way around the outer edges of the pocket. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now you're just gonna close up your pocket. So stitch across the top and then stitch all the way around the outer edges of the pocket, but do not stitch the front of your pant. Again, we're only stitching the pocket closed, so go ahead and do that now. All right, so now you should have a pocket. So you wanna make sure that you press really good. I also finished off the seams of my pocket with my serger all the way around. So again, go ahead and press and get it nice and flat. All right, so now we're gonna do top stitching along the front and along the pocket opening. So you're gonna top stitch all the way down to that large circle, and then you're gonna continue the top stitching along the pocket edge. Do not close up the pocket, you won't be able to use it. So make sure that you're only top stitching the pocket edge. So let's go ahead and do that now. And so here's just a close up. Here's my top stitching to the front. And then I broke those stitches and I continued where I left off at to do the pocket edge. And then you can base the pocket to the pant when you're done. Okay, everybody, so this part right here is totally optional, but this is just what I did. At this point, I took my front and back pieces to my serger and I finished off all of the edges except for the hem. So the inner leg, the outer leg, the fly, the self-facing, I went ahead and finished it now. So once I have everything finished, now let's pick back up. We are on step 10, which happens to say, finish off the front and back self-facing pieces. <laughs> so that is the top of your pant. You go ahead and finish those off however you choose to finish yours. I did mine with my serger. So now you should have transferred your fold line and we're gonna fold along that line and then take it to our ironing board and press it down on your front and back pieces. However, only on your front piece will you be basting the right front opening edge together. Only on the front right. Not the front left, front right. And here is a diagram of it in the directions. So as you can see here, you turn the front self-facing self pieces to the inside along the fold line, press and base the right front opening edge together. So if you need to lay your pieces the same exact way to make sure that you're doing the front, then do that, but only base the right front opening edge. All right, so I have my front opening edge basted. So now let's install that zipper. So what you're gonna do here, still only working on your front pieces, we're not touching the backs just yet. You want to lay your front right sides facing. 
So go ahead again, put them right sides facing and begin to just line up your notches and dots that you have transferred on both of those pieces. All right, so since we are gonna be sewing our fronts along the center front, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin along that line that I have transferred. So I'm just, again, I'm gonna go ahead and pin all the way up the center front line, but I'm gonna keep my left front self facing free. So as you can see here, I have my left front facing up. We're not gonna be sewing that down, so you just wanna keep that free. So again, do not sew the left front facing. I'm just gonna continue pinning right now along my center front seam. So go ahead and do that and we'll move on to the next step, which is you only want to stitch your regular stitch between the notch and the large circle, but then you're gonna machine baste above that dot. So machine baste from the top of your facing all the way down to your dot and at your dot, you're going to regular stitch from the dot between that notch. All right, so now I have my center front sewn. Again, it should only be basted above the notch and then regular stitched below between the dark, um, the circle and the notch. So now that you have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and open mine up with wrong size up facing me. And so now the next step, which we're on 11B, you're gonna fold along that fold line that you transferred and you're just gonna press that out. So fold it back, this is the left front and you're just gonna fold it along that fold line and go ahead and take it to your machine and press it. All right, so now I have my left front folded over and pressed along that fold line here. And so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my pants back right sides facing. I'm just gonna follow along with the diagram that they have for 11C. That's the step that we are on right now. And you can see that you should have um, some left over, a little bit extended from your left front. So now you wanna go ahead and grab your zipper. Make sure that the zipper teeth is facing up toward you and you're gonna line up the zipper tape with the square that you transferred and then you're gonna line up the zipper teeth with the press edge of your pant. So go ahead and line everything up and begin pinning the zipper in place. So once you have it all pinned, go ahead and switch to your zipper foot and stitch close to the pressed edge. All right, so now you should have your zipper installed. It should be stitched really close to the edge and look really nice and clean. Okay, so now we're just gonna pin the remainder of the zipper tape to the right front extension. So what you wanna do is just go ahead and put some pins in. We're only pinning to the fly extension. We're not pinning to the right pant. So go ahead and pin in place now. Now what you do want to do is make sure that you fold over the um, zipper tape at the top on the right side and pin that down in place because you wanna stitch that down as well. So go ahead and pin the top of the zipper tape down and now you can take it to your sewing machine and just stitch down the remainder of the zipper tape to the right, the right fly only. You're not stitching the front, only the right fly extension. All right, so once you have uh, the zipper installed and sewn to the right fly extension, you're going to fold over the extension onto the front and just pin it in place and then you're gonna take it to your machine and baste it in place. Just use your basting stitch and just sew straight down the front fly extension onto the front of the pan. All right, so now we are still in step 11, but we are down on F and I have my pants facing me, so the right side is up. And so you need to transfer your stitching line um, to the right side of your pants. But if you're like me and you lost your line, just go ahead and grab your pattern piece back out and just retrace your line so that you can have your stitching line that you need to create this last, um, that curve on the front of your pant. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just tracing my markings back over and I'm just gonna do that until I have my line, and then I'm just gonna sew along the stitching line. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so once you have your stitching done on the front of your pant, now we can move on down to step 12, and that is to stitch the inner leg seam of our pants. So go ahead and grab your back pieces, and with right sides together, you want to line up your notches and pin there first, 
and just pin down the remainder of both of your inner leg seams. So go ahead and pin them together now and take them to your sewing machine and stitch them together. Once you have your inner leg seam sewn together, you wanna go ahead and take it to your ironing board and press those seams out flat like I've done here. And then you wanna go ahead and finish the remainder of your crotch seam. So I'm gonna start at the center where my seams are for my inner leg seam. I'm gonna match those seams up first and I'm gonna pin there. And then you just want to pin along the remainder of the crotch at the notches. So go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and place your pins in. And once you have it pinned, go ahead and take it to your machine and stitch it down. And then you're also gonna stitch one fourth of an inch away inside the seam allowance along the curve just to enforce it. All right, so now that you have your crotch seam and your inner leg seams both finished, now we can go ahead and finish off the sides of our pants. So what you wanna do is have them right sides facing. You want to just open up that right side edge and just begin pinning them together at the sides. So again, just start pinning at the self facing all the way down the length of the side of the pants, matching notches as you go. Okay, once they're sewn, go ahead and stitch down both sides of your pants. All right, so I have mine sewn as well as pressed open. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my seam ripper and just undo the basting right here at the fly. So I'm just taking my seam ripper and gently un, um, unhooking those stitches right at the fly only. And I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit, you know, get all the loose threads off. I'm gonna unzip it and now we can move on to step 15. So with step 15, we're going to fold down the left facing, the left self facing, fold it down along the zipper tape. Make sure that you have the loose zipper tape inside of that. Go ahead and pin it in place and get you a needle and thread and we're gonna slip stitch the facing right along the zipper tape. All right, so once you have the facing slip stitched down to the zipper tape, the next thing you want to do is just put some tacks in it um, to the pleats as well as to the side seam of your pants. Now make sure that the thread is not going through the pants to the other side. You just wanna put some short, quick tacks to hold down the facing to the pants at the pleats and at the side seams. So once you have that done, go ahead and grab your hook and bar and go ahead and attach that to your pants now. So here are my pants, the waistband, the facing is tacked down, the hook and bar is attached as well. And so now we can move on to the hem of our pants. So for the hem, you want to fold under one fourth of an inch at the hem and then fold up six inches. Um, I ended up folding up a little bit more, about a half an inch, and then I only folded up five and a half inches. So just try on your pants and then fold up your hem to where you need it to be right now and then press it and stitch it down. All right, so once you have your hem done, you could also do a blind hem stitch if you would like. I just went ahead and stitched mine, or you can hand sew your hem in place. That's always an option. So the next step is for us to go ahead and grab our tabs, which is piece five. With right sides together, you're gonna go ahead and fold your tab piece um, lengthwise, and then you're gonna stitch down the long edge of that. So just fold it in half and then stitch down the long edge. Keep the short sides open so we can flip it out. So go ahead and fold yours like I have here. You can press it out. And then again, go ahead and stitch it along the long side only. So here's my tab piece finished. So after I sewed it, I trimmed it, flipped it inside out so the right side is out. And then I edge stitch on both long edges of the tab. So now you wanna go ahead and cut it into equal pieces, three and a half inches long. You will have extra left over, but we don't need that. So it's only three tabs. So what you wanna do is fold over 5 eighths of an inch at the top and at the bottom of the tab. So just fold 5 eighths of an inch under on all three of your tab pieces, and then we can go ahead and sew them onto our pants now. All right, so go ahead and grab your pants and you should have some markings transferred for where your tab should go. If not, just go ahead and grab your pattern piece and then just retrace those squares to where your tabs go. So go ahead and lay your tabs on top of those markings and pin them in place. 
you should have three tabs, two in the front and one in the back. Once you have them pinned, go ahead and sew them down now. So now I'm back, I have my tabs sewn in place and I go ahead and put my pants to the side. And this is optional um, if you want to do the self-facing, the tie for it. Then what you would do is on the side that has the notch, go ahead and sew that side down now. So here I have it sewn down and I've pressed open my seam. So now I'm gonna fold it right sides facing. And what you wanna do is you wanna start sewing at one edge, so all the way down and around. And then once you get to the back, you wanna leave a space open so that you'll be able to flip it out to the right side. So I'm just gonna put some pins here as a reminder to myself that I need to stop. So again, you start at one edge and then you sew all the way around. When you get to your um, pin, backstitch, leave that part open and then start at the other pin, backstitch, and then continue sewing the other side of the tie down. All right, so once you have it all sewn, go ahead and flip it right sides out, give it a good press, and then you just wanna slip stitch that open and close. Once you do that, you are all done. Thank you so much for joining me for another Sew With Me video. If you have any questions, leave them for me below. I'll be more than happy to answer. Like always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next Sew With Me video. Blessings, everyone. Bye.